Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. Hello, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be taking this summertime treat, the ice cream sandwich, and I'm going to be transforming it into ice cream sushi. So this recipe was inspired by a post I put on my social media recently. I believe the place is called Gelato, and they make gelatos and ice creams in the form of sushi. I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I thought about how would I do this at home? And then when I was walking down the ice cream aisle, I saw our very ubiquitous summertime friend treat here, ice cream sandwich. I said, I bet I could make that into ice cream sushi. So I was up late last night testing things out and indeed it works. So let me walk you through the steps of transforming the humble ice cream sandwich into ice cream sushi. So I want to keep this recipe really, really simple. So all you're gonna need is your ice cream sandwich, a couple candies, and a couple flavors of ice cream. You can choose any flavor you like. I wanted to make this visually consistent to typical sushi, so I chose mango sorbet and raspberry sorbet, but choose any flavor you like. So to begin with, we're going to prepare our ice cream sandwich. And what we're gonna do is separate the cookie from the ice cream. So just peel this cookie layer off like that. I find it helps to work on wax paper. Oh, and if your cookie breaks, that's all right. All right, so we've removed our two cookies. Now, if you can avoid it, try not to handle your ice cream. I'm working on some wax paper so I can manipulate the paper rather than touching the ice cream. Okay, now to make the makizushi, the round sushi, we're gonna cut first a square. I'm gonna take this square and stack it on top of the remaining, and then we're gonna cut it again, lining it up. Now, this is going to be our nigiri sushi. Another thing that I found really helpful is to have a cookie tray that's sitting in your freezer so it's nice and icy cold. Let me go grab mine. And then you can transfer your ice cream pieces to that because as you can see, it wants to melt. Now, quickly place this back in the freezer. Now we're gonna shape our square into a cylinder. So trim off the corners. As you can see, this is getting very soft to work very fast. Now we're gonna take one of our cookies and we're gonna cut it in half lengthwise. And this will be our nori. And wrap this around. Now you're gonna be a little bit short, but that's okay. I'm gonna grab another piece here and wrap this as well. Now we're gonna take a boba straw that you've saved from the last time you had boba. And using the pointy end, we're gonna poke a hole in it. Twist it and lift it out. Grab our icy cold tray, quickly lift that, place that in there, and run back to the freezer. <laughs> Next, we're gonna pair the topping for our nigiri sushi. So you're gonna take your ice cream, any ice cream that you like, and you're gonna let it sit on your counter for maybe five minutes, just so you can scoop it pretty easily. Take a couple scoops of that and place it on some wax paper, and then fold it over. Then take a rolling pin and lightly press it down. What we're looking for is a nice even layer, about a half an inch thick, about the same thickness as the ice cream sandwich ice cream layer. Then quickly place that back in the freezer to let that set up. So do that for both flavors of ice cream. So here's my raspberry sorbet, nice and frozen. Peel it back so you can see what it looks like. There it is, beautiful. And this is supposed to represent the tuna. Now, using a sharp knife, we're going to cut this into a rectangle that will fit our ice cream. I'm just gonna eyeball it. It's gonna be about that size. Now, I really wanted mine to look a bit like tuna, so I gave it a little bit of texture by doing some little diagonal hashes here. Now, using the blade of your knife, pick it up and place that right on top of your ice cream. Isn't that great? I'm so happy about that. That looks wonderful. Look at that. Yes. We're going to do the same thing with our mango. There's our beautiful mango sorbet. Again, we're just going to cut a rectangle to fit. Place that on there. Beautiful. Back to the freezer. <laughs> so traditionally, when you have the tamagotsuji, you have a little band of nori that goes across it. And I tried using this cookie here and bending it. But what I found is when you cut it thinly, it does that. 
it breaks and cracks. So no matter how gently I tried to bend it, it always cracked and broke. But I did figure something out. So what you want to do is get your fingertips wet with a little bit of water, just a little bit. So now that you have your fingertips dampened, you're just going to take this cookie and crumble it up. It's kind of gross, I know. <laughs> but what we're making is a little dough here, cookie dough with just a little bit of moisture on your fingertips. Not too much, otherwise it's gonna be just too sticky. So knead it and knead it. In the beginning, it looks like it's not gonna work, but eventually it comes together. There we have our dough. Now we have our little cylinder of dough. Fold the wax paper over top it. Then take a little rolling pin and roll it out. Yes, this is so perfect. And now we have a beautiful piece of black dough. Now slice this into thin strips and this will be our band of nori. Trim it up. So this dough will dry out pretty quickly so you want to use it soon after you roll it out. Gently lift it up. It's very very supple and flexible. And Just bend that over. Perfect, no cracking, yay! <laughs> Back into the freezer. So for some color interest and garnish, I'm going to be using a little piece of sour candy tape in color green. I'm gonna make some of that fake plastic grass. So grab yourself a pair of kitchen shears, your sour tape, and then just cut little triangles. And that creates the little decorative grass. You could totally skip this part. This just makes it look a little bit more fun. Doo, doo, doo. Sour candy smell really takes me back. And there you have it. Grass. We're going to finish the makizushi or the round sushi with a little bit of a filling. And I'm just using a starburst. So starbursts are little chewy fruit flavored candies. This is orange and it's pretty hard. So we want to place this in the microwave for about three seconds. Not much longer than that. Otherwise it's going to just melt. Oh. Try to drop it on the floor as many times as possible because it adds a little bit of character. Three to five seconds and now it's nice and soft. So we're gonna knead this so it's nice and consistent and we're gonna make a little cylinder. There you have our little plug and place it right into the hole. Boink. So satisfying. We can use our little green grass for decoration there. And there you have it, the ice cream sandwich transformed into ice cream sushi. <laughs> I am so happy about how this turned out. It's a little bit tricky to make these because you are dealing with a frozen confection and you're constantly running back and forth between the counter and the freezer. Ideally, this would be made in like a walk-in freezer, but I don't live in a place that has a walk-in freezer. But if you do, that's where you should make this. All right, let's go ahead and taste these. I'm gonna taste this raspberry one first. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. The vanilla actually has a pretty subtle flavor. This is not any kind of fancy vanilla ice cream. Of course, this is an ice cream sandwich, but it actually really goes well with that sorbet, which is really intensely raspberry flavored, has some acidity, and that vanilla is kind of fluffy and light, so it makes it kind of creamy. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. I thought I was going to get a brain freeze, but I actually didn't. Grateful for that. <laughs> All right, let's try the mango one next with our little strip of cookie on top. Mmm. Mm. That one was utterly divine. I love mango sorbet. Well, I love mangoes. Really great mango flavor. And again, in concert, in combination with that vanilla, really, really nice. And then you get a little bit of that cookie on top. It gives you just a little bit of chocolate chew. Not too much chocolate flavor. Actually, you taste it mostly at the end when you're left with a little bit of cookie stuck to your teeth. But delicious. Absolutely delicious. I've never had an ice cream sandwich taste so good. <laughs> Lastly, let's taste our big makizushi. Oh, look at this. This is, this is not going to... All right, this is so big. I'm going to have to just take a little pinch of it like this. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. 
and it's an ice cream sandwich a very familiar nostalgic flavor of soft chocolate flavored cookie on the outside and fluffy light vanilla almost soft serve in the middle it's totally a throwback to when you were a kid and you got ice cream sandwich all over the place and you had the paper sticking everywhere and your hands were sticky they were never really easy to eat but somehow delightful to eat right if you've never had an ice cream sandwich before and you need an analogy it's kind of like if an oreo became ice cream have it with the starburst and see how that is mm. <laughs> That's actually really tough to eat because the Starburst is very cold and it's become very, very hard. Mm. But you know what? It works really well with the ice cream. It becomes this kind of orange sickle flavor because you have the orange of the taffy and then vanilla. It's a great combination, actually. Mm -hmm. Once you get over the fact that the Starburst is very, very hard. <laughs> So there you have it, just in time for summer. That's how you transform an ice cream sandwich into beautiful ice cream sushi. I think this would be really fun to make at a birthday party or a, any party for that matter if you're into food making. And yeah, if you guys do make this, please share your results with me on social media. I want to see them. Be sure to share this video with your friends and yeah, you know, follow me on social media. Share your creations with me. And I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something and I shall see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.